But again, day three in the books, vlog number three, and can't wait to see what happens tomorrow. Who knows where we'll be. Um, do all that good stuff, like, comment, and uh, yeah, so you get notified, see uh, what the rest of this trip holds. We're almost halfway there. Again, here seven days, day number three, done. Always remember, I'm Matty Ice. Peace out. Day number four out here in Vegas. So on this day, woke up, got some food, and headed straight to the pool. The first three days, really waking up early, getting a jump start to the day, working out, but not today. I slept in, I think, 12 hours. Beauty of not having to set an alarm, your body just wakes up whenever it wants to wake up. It was one of the nicer days out of the week, so had to go to the pool and get some sun. Super nice pool too, really big. I think there was three of them here at the Excalibur. That's where I stayed. One of the older places on the strip, but definitely gets my thumbs up approval on places to stay out here in Vegas for the price. And let's be real, are we really staying in the hotel room when you're on vacation? With all that being said, let's get into some poker hands because I know that's what you guys really want to see. We had a lot of choices on places to play, but we end up at Bally's, or currently known as the Horseshoe. It's been a few years since I played at this location, and when I first walked up, I mean, night and day difference from what I remember. Completely remodeled, and actually looks like a poker room now. With all the cool pictures on the wall, and Hall of Fame board when you first walk in, I mean, super cool seeing all the players that really started this game. Players like Dole Brunson, Chris Ferguson, Scotty Wynn. The list goes on and on. So good for the Horseshoe Casino, really separating themselves from the other poker rooms out here in Vegas. But if the cards don't cooperate, I just might have to take everything I said back. So let's wait and see. As you guys saw, most, if not all, the tables were full. So the room was pretty packed. Their biggest game was a 2-3, 500 max. I think they had a 1-2 or a 1-3, but the max was a lot lower. And to be honest, I really don't understand the difference between a 1-3 or a 2-3. I mean, let me know down below what you guys think. I mean, I think it's the exact same. So that's what we decide to hop into, the 2-3. So we get our chips and we take our seat. First relevant hand we get into, two orbits in, we're in the button straddle. Usually in these lower stakes games, any way to bump up the action, I'm all for it. So a lot of button straddles and under the gun straddles in this session. We get three limps in the field. It passes over me because just like the MGM, it skips me if the action doesn't change. So the small blind folds and big blind last to act, I mean, besides me, makes it 36. All the limpers get out of the way and we have three high, but hey, it's suited. So we're gonna get into the mix, we're in position. So heads up to a flop, and it comes not really ideal, queen, jack, five, rainbow, with one club. So we have backdoor straight, backdoor flush possibilities. Surprisingly, he checks, which I think is a mistake. I mean, he should be C betting majority of his range and on majority of boards. But hey, I'll take a free card, I check back. The turn gives us some hope, it's a four of spades. So one of our backdoor draws comes in, an ace or a six gives us a straight. He now leads on this card for $30, which is super strange. This card should not improve him at all, so I call instantaneously. Still sitting with three high, we're gonna need some help. Sadly, the river does not improve us, it's a king of hearts. But I'm having evil intentions. I could potentially use this card as a scare card, because if he happened to slow play a queen or a jack on the flop, this card is one over his pair. He checks it over to me, and now I'm kinda replaying the hand in my head. He checked the flop, led turn for 30, and now checking the river. So now I'm thinking he's either slow playing the nuts with ace 10 suited for Broadway, or he has a pocket pair sixes through tens. Those are the only possible combinations that I can think of that play this way. Regardless of what he has, we're gonna need to put some money in the middle if we wanna win. So I look at the pot and it has around $140 in it. So I decide to bet and I make it 50. 
a little over one third pot. Like I said earlier, we're either gonna get There's an under the gun straddle on this hand, and we have pocket aces in the hijack. There's a few limbs for $6 to me, and we're gonna bump it up, we make it 45. The button makes the call, and I'm sure you guys will get familiar with him because we're involved with this guy a lot throughout the session. His name was Luis, and it'll just be easier to refer him by his name going forward. And the lady to my right makes the call. So three ways to a flop with the best possible starting hand, and it's jack five two with two clubs. Lady to my right, first to act, checks to me. I see bet, I make it 60. And the button takes about two seconds and raises it to 160. Besides the two clubs, this is definitely a dry board. So he could potentially have a combo draw, maybe ace four, ace three of clubs. But other than that, I mean, a set. So we're gonna make the call and see what develops on the turn. With 450 in the middle, the turn is a beautiful ace of diamonds. So we practically have the nuts, unless he raised with three, four of clubs specifically. Even though he raised my flop bet, we're gonna continue to put money in and we lead for 75. I know, I know I make you really small, but I only have about $180 behind and he covers us. So anything bigger, he could potentially get away from all his holdings and we don't want that. He calls and basically gonna jam to any river other than a club. We get our wish, it's the king of hearts. I jam for my 180 effective, and he basically snap folds. And unlike the last hand, I do show my cards, I show the aces, and he soon later tells me that he had pocket jacks. This guy was a decent player, but he technically had the fourth nuts. I mean, am I really betting and calling with 3-4 or queen 10 for a gut shot? Not likely. So he's basically only losing to aces and kings. And the speed that he folded, I don't know. I really think he just missed his flush draw. Or maybe he just made a Mike Possel move and read my soul. A few hands later, we're in the small blind with king three of hearts. It basically limps around, so we toss in the extra dollar. Big blind checks his options, and we're one away from a family pot. Flop comes pretty good. It's jack of hearts, two of clubs, four of hearts. So we have backdoor straight and the second nut flush draw. First to act, we check, and it checks around. So still many ways to a turn, and the turn is an eight of hearts, so we catch our flush right away. Can't afford to have it check around again, so we lead out and throw out 10. The under the gun, Luis calls, and the button calls. We cut the players in half, so three ways to a river, and the river is another eight, it's the eight of spades. So with a paired board, there is a few more hands that are beating us, but I still think we're good with our king high flush. So again, I lead, this time for 30. The under the gun min clicks it, makes it 60. And like I said before, min clicks are just weird. But honestly, I don't think I'm getting called by worse if I happen to raise. I'm only gonna get called by better or potentially re-raised. So I just snap call. He flips over his hand and he had either pocket sevens or pocket nines, and the dealer announces two pair, so I flip over my hand, and we win. So now we are three for three against our villain thus far. Let's keep it rolling. Two hands later, I start recording a little late because I was writing down notes on the hand you just saw. We have the ladies in the cutoff. The low jack makes it 15. We three bet it, three X to 45. He calls, so heads up to a flop and it comes eight, four, three, two diamonds. He checks, I see bet 30, he quickly calls. The turn is another low card, it's an offsuit something. It was below the eight, that's all I really remember. I bet 40, he calls again. The river is an offsuit 10, so we still have an overpair. And majority of the time, if he did have me beat, I should have heard from him by now. But again, this is smaller stakes, so some players do like to hide in the weeds with strong hands. 
So when he checks, I snap check back and just show my cards and I win. See, C bet, told you, you're here, allowed me to C bet. A little context to the statement I just made about C betting. Throughout this session so far, a lot of these players would lead a lot of the flops. So if I would raise pre-flop, say ace, jack, ace, queen, ace, king, pocket pair of some sort, and I'd be in position, they would actually lead the flop and I would just fold when I whiff. And this happened about four or five times already and I would usually say, thank you for betting because you saved me money, I would have C bet. Basically saying that leading out too often is wrong, but not really trying to be mean about it, just saying it without saying it. Because more often than not, most aggressors pre-flop C bet the flop and if you happen to have a decent hand you can easily check raise and make a lot more money than if you just lead out but that's my style i mean everybody has their own play style which is totally fine that's what makes this game fun and interesting so always having to adjust based on the types of players that you're playing against or the stakes that you're playing and sometimes a little table talk never hurt nobody let me know down below if you guys are talkative at the table or you just keep quiet. But back to the poker. A little while goes by and we have pocket tens in the low jack. We make it 15 and the cutoff and both blinds make the call. So four ways to a flop and it comes ace of clubs, queen of clubs, six of spades. Not good for our hand, but pretty good for our range. The blinds check to me, I see bet 25. The button gets out of the way. So does the small blind but the big blind makes the call. So heads up to a turn, the turn comes a king of clubs. So we have a gutter to a royal flush. A jack of clubs on the river would pretty much guarantee us the high hand promotion. The big blind checks, and even though we do have a massive draw, we still only have fourth pair. So I decide to check back, and the river is a total brick. It's a three of hearts. He leads on this card. I really don't remember how much, cause I snap fold. I show the Ten of Clubs, and he shows the Jack of Clubs. We'll never know what the other card was, but I'm pretty sure I was beat. I saw the Ten. No, but what face card did you show? Jack. Jack of Clubs. Jack of Clubs, thank you. Yeah. Put that with Jack King. I was looking at the board, I was like, hey, there's a chance. Yeah, he added you, it is. Yeah, damn it. Wasn't meant to be. In this poker room, like the MGM Grand, there's a high hand promotion, but instead of an hour, like at the MGM, it's every 20 minutes, so a lot of money being pushed back to the players, which is pretty awesome. A lot of tables and a lot of hands being dealt, so it was very rare if a full house had the high hand. It was usually quads, if not straight or royal flushes. The main reason why a full house usually didn't make it the whole 20 minutes is because at the horseshoe, you only need one card in your hand to make the high hand bonus. So if you had ace high or king high, and there was three aces or three kings on the board, you technically have four of a kind. So it wasn't too difficult to get four of a kind, straight flush or royal flush with using only one card in your hand. The very next hand we're dealt in, we have our favorite, jack 10 suited. Under the gun one makes it 15, the low jack calls, and I call for 12 more. Three ways to a flop, the flop comes Five of hearts, eight of diamonds, nine of clubs. We have two overs, open-ended, and the backdoor flush draw. So a lot of potential to be had on future streets, but we're out of position, so we check in flow. The end of the gun one, the initial razor, also checks, and this leaves the opportunity for the low jack to put in a bet, and he does, makes it 30. With all our potential and equity, and we're out of position, we wanna bump this pot up, we make it 80. The initial razor gets out of the way, and the low jack makes the call. Obviously looking to improve, the turn comes, it's the three clubs, so we brick absolutely everything. No heart, no straight, and not even our 10 or our jack for a pair. Without improving at all, I think we put enough money in this pot already, so we decide to check to him and see what he wants to do. And what he wants to do is check back. Again, looking to improve either a seven or a queen for our straight, or I'll take even a 10 or a jack for a pair. But it comes neither, it comes another brick, a two of hearts. 
With a little over 200 in the middle, and with this line that we took, checking the turn, I'm gonna have to put out a really big bet if I want him to fold. I'm thinking either three quarter pot, full pot, or 1.5 X pot. But I decided to check, because in my head, I kind of put myself in my opponent's shoes, and if I was facing myself, and I took that line, I would snap call pretty much any bet, even with third pair, a pair of fives. Yeah. I cheapishly flip over my cards, and he shows queen nine for top pair. Not sure I was getting that to fold. A triple barrel, I'm sure would've got the job done, but by me checking the turn, it kind of put my cards face up and didn't really tell a convincing story. But let me know down below if you think a river bet would've worked. In this hand, we're in the small blind. Luis under the gun, limps for $3. The cutoff limps, and we look down at King Queen suited. A really good looking hand, so we bump it up. We make it 20 to go. Luis makes the call, and the cutoff makes the call as well. So three ways to a flop, and it comes amazing. It's ace, jack, 10, rainbow. We have the best possible hand, and with my aggressive image, we're not gonna change that. We lead out, we make it 25. I'd be doing this with all my ace high holdings, all my pair push straight draw holdings, or possibly even two pairs. 25 seems to be just enough because they both make the call. So still three ways to a turn, hoping for a brick, and it comes, it's a six of spades. The backdoor flush draw comes in, but we still have the nuts, so we're not slowing down. Luis has around $350 in his stack, the cutoff has 200, and we're trying to get it all. Question is, how? So with 350 being the effective stack, we come up with a sizing of $60. That'll set up a perfect pot size river jam. Luis makes the call, but the cutoff gets out of the way. I was hoping with Luis just making the call, it would entice the cutoff to float with his draws. So it won't exactly be a perfect pot size river jam, but still pretty close. Hoping for another brick on the river, and not exactly a brick, but a decent card. It's a nine of hearts. So we still have the nuts. Backdoor flush misses, but the board's a lot more connected. A lot more two pair combinations available, and even a smaller straight, eight, seven. I think for a little while on this card, because my options are leading out to get value from two pairs, possibly a set, or hopefully a, a smaller straight. Or do I want to check and hoping he check jams with either complete air or a good hand of his own. I would just hate it if I checked and he checked back like an ace or possibly a smaller two pair like 10-9 or jack-9, jack-10. So I decide to lead, I make it 125, but he quickly folds showing a jack. I guess the right move was to check, but that's just being results oriented. I still feel like I played the hand right. The very next shuffle, we're on the button. I believe we were four-handed because a couple of players got up from the table to go take a break. We have king eight offsuit and four-handed, decent hand. We make it 10. Small blind gets out of the way and Luis in the big blind makes the call. So heads up to a flop and it's queen of spades, eight of diamonds, three of diamonds. He checks, I make it 10, he calls. The turn is a 10 of clubs. He checks again and I decided to check back. River is a king of clubs, so we have two pair now. He leads for 20, we snap it off. We show our cards before he does, and it's good, we win. I don't know if you can tell by his voice, but he was not happy. To this point, we've been on the better end of most of the hands that we played against this guy. So you can kind of feel it in the air that it's on. Most of the players come back at this point, so we're back to seven or eight handed. We're on the cutoff with pocket jacks, everyone's favorite starting hand. There's one limp to me, I make it 15. Our villain in the small blind makes the call and the limper gets out of the way. We flop an over pair, it comes nine, six, four with two spades. He checks to me, we make it 20, he calls right away. Turn is an eight of clubs. He checks again, we make it 25. 
and he throws out 90 and we basically snaffled. I guess just the way he did it or I just had a bad feeling. It's kind of hard seeing it on film to know exactly what was going on, but I guess I just had a bad feeling. I'm okay with the fold, but there's not a lot of river cards that I'm really going to like. And I'm almost 100% sure I was going to have to face a big bet or possibly even a jam. And I really didn't want to put myself in that situation. So maybe should have thought about it a little bit longer, but I'm still okay with the fold. It seems like these last few hours, it's just been me and Luis playing cards and everybody else watching. We're the only aggressors at the table. And it seems like everybody else is just on the sideline getting a crash course on how to play cards. I'm not saying me and this guy are Phil Ivey and Daniel Negreanu, but we're the only ones literally playing is what I'm basically getting at. We're shorthanded again. We're in the small blind with King Queen of Hearts. Luis under the gun makes it 15. The button calls and we're gonna make it more. We make it 55. I should have made it a little bit bigger because I know Luis calls with basically any two cards. Big blind gets out of the way, Luis calls, and the button gets out of the way. So both of us, again, to a flop, and it's ace of spades, king of diamonds, five of clubs. So we flop middle pair, and you can make an argument for betting or checking, but we just decide to check this time. He checks it back, confirming that we're in the lead right now. The turn is a five of spades. So, pair's the bottom card, but we're not really too worried about it. If we're ahead on the flop, we're probably still ahead on the turn. So, we lead out, we make it 15. He snap calls. So, to a river, the river is a four of clubs. Another card that really doesn't change anything, backdoor spades miss. So, if he did happen to have a flush draw or some sort of middling pocket pair, uh, I want to give him some rope to bet out. So, I check, but he quickly checks it back. I say I have a king. He also flips over a king, king four of spades. So we both have kings and fives with ace kicker. Lame. You had three pair though. Three pairs should be like something, you know? Because that's, that's difficult to get. We're back to a full ring game. We're in the hijack with queen eight of diamonds. There's two limbs to us. We make it 20. Full to middle position, he calls. Heads up to a flop, and it's queen jack nine, all clubs. He checks to us, and another hand you can go either way by betting or checking. We decide to bet to charge any club that he may have, or possibly a 10 for open-ended. We make it 15, he calls. The turn is an offsuit four. He checks again, and I don't think we're gonna get three streets of value from worse. Yes, I am giving up a free card, but would hate to get check raised and be put in a tough spot with top hair. The river is a queen of hearts, so now we have three of a kind. He actually leads on this card for 45, and I don't think I'm gonna get called by worse if I happen to raise. I mean, we are at the top of our range with three of a kind, but we're only gonna get called by better, a straight, a flush, or possibly even a full house. So folding is obviously out of the question. Raising just seems a little too thin, so we just decided to make the call. He shows King Jack offsuit with the King of Clubs. So he had middle pair on the flop and a straight flush draw. Yeah. I pretty much doubt I would've got called if I would've raised the river. And also I'm glad I checked back the turn because it would've put us in a bad spot, betting out 40, $45 and getting check raised to 150, 175. Having only top pair with probably the worst kicker would have put us to the test. So glad we didn't have to face that. And we take down another pot with three queens. Other hand we get involved with, with Luis. I'm in the cutoff with pocket sixes. Folds around to me, I make it 15. Folds to him in the small blind, any three bets to 50. We have a pair, we're in position, so we just decide to call. I could be putting in a four bet some percentage of the time, but if we happen to get some resistance, pocket sixes isn't really the hand that I want to get it all in with. So heads up to a flop, and it comes five of clubs, jack of clubs, king of hearts. Was thinking of a board, and that really wasn't the board I was thinking of. He could easily have a list of hands that are currently beating us. Ace, king, ace, jack, king, queen, king, jack, jack, ten, jack, nine. I mean, the list is pretty huge. So when he bets pot for $100, I basically snaffled. Not really looking to play turns and rivers with such a mediocre hand and not really knowing where I'm at. When I release my cards, he flips over his and he had pocket aces. Super glad I didn't four bet pre-flop 
because we would have lost a lot more money. I tap the table, say good hand, and I'll give him that one. He deserves it. Not sure how many hands me and Luis get involved with together, but here's another one. I'm in the hijack, folds around to me, and we make it 15 with pocket kings. The cutoff folds, and Luis on the button makes the call, hoping to avoid the dreaded ace on the flop. And the kings are truly an ace magnet because it comes ace, seven, six with two diamonds. I see bet, representing all the aces, ace, king, ace, queen in my range. I make it 15. He quickly makes the call, but we do have the backdoor flush draw. So even if a diamond comes either on the turn or the river, we could potentially represent the nut flush. The turn is a jack of hearts. I continue, I make it 20 this time. I could slow down in pot control, but with both of our aggressive images, I think he would just pounce if I check the turn. So by me keeping the initiative and him just calling my turn bet of 20 makes me feel a lot better about my hand. The river is a blank, it's a three hearts. A lot of draws missed and we can definitely get value from his middling pocket pairs or from a variety of hands that he's calling down with. So we make it super small, we go less than a third pot, make it $30, hoping to get a crying call or perhaps induce a bluff. And he goes with option number two, he raises to $90 and I snap call. I already made up my decision that I was gonna call if he raised. And when I call, he shakes his head, flips over his cards, and he has five seven offsuit for a pair of sevens. This guy's V-pip was definitely up there in this session. This hand and most of the others were perfect examples of that. Everything's going good, going smooth, catching some hands, playing well, winning lots of money until we get that tap on the shoulder. It kind of sucked because I was doing good and I really liked the poker room, but I don't really want to keep playing if I can't film. So we just decided to rack up, book the win and take our business elsewhere. Finally got that dreaded tap on the shoulder guys. Didn't think it was going to happen, but we did. Can't film in the casino. I was like, all right, whatever. I'll go somewhere else. But had a good session, played for four hours. In for 500, I believe. Yeah, 500 was the max. And out for 981. So decent profit, four hours of play. Got into uh, a lot of interesting hands, especially uh, to our guy on the left. Uh, Luis, I believe his name was. Um, really aggressive player. I'm an aggressive player, so two aggressive players battling. It turns into a good time. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys uh, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more. Again, this is day four. On to day number five tomorrow. Who knows where we'll end up. I still want to go to Resorts World and uh, the Encore. So definitely got to head that direction. All right, guys. I'm Matty Ice. Peace out.